Hello, my name is Brian Wagner. I'm a science teacher at Harwood Union Middle School in Duxbury, Vermont. And I'm Susan Hennessy. I'm the Professional Development Coordinator for the Tarrant Institute for Innovative Education at UVM. The following is a presentation that was made at the iPad Summit in Boston in November of 2013. And it's looking at how Harwood Union Middle School uses Evernote as a student self-assessment and, uh, and for ePortfolios. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most proficient of them all? Why, it is you, my evil queen. Of course I am. I worked on my assessments throughout the year that related to the Harvard graduate expectations. I captured and presented my learning using an ePortfolio in Evernote, which allowed me to organize work efficiently and incorporate a multimedia design into the portfolio. Now we'd like to tell you how we got there. Mom and Dad, welcome to my student-led conference. I'm going to my notebook, where I have all my portfolio evidence in, and this is all the stuff I have to show you. I'm going to start with number seven, working collaboratively. This is the oratorical assignment for English, which is a speech. This is my rubric for it. Down here, I've pasted in my revision plan, which I did with other people, collaboratively. And here's my reflection about how it relates. And then here, in another note, I have a link to my video of me presenting my oratorical. Hi, Boston. Hope you're enjoying the conference. So what Aaron was just sharing with you was uh, we wanted to have you see the end product of all of the work here at Harvard Union Middle School. The idea was that students would capture their learning in their Evernote portfolio and then use the, the tagging system within the portfolio in Evernote to be able to share with their parents. So now we want to explain to you how we got there. Originally, um, a group of uh, teachers and principals got together to look at the mission statement. We were tasked with the idea of creating a curriculum council to be able to look at what a graduate should be able to know, understand, and do upon graduation, and to bring that mission statement alive. So that group of teachers, again, a number of years ago, decided to create Howard graduate expectations. And there were 10 of them that the community voted on. What we did was looked at that mission statement and decided to make it measurable. And we came up with four academic goals, as you can see below, and then six social and civic components. And again, the idea is that the students would be working throughout the year, doing projects, engaged in, in all kinds of different learning opportunities, but make the direct link to the graduate expectation and find that evidence for themselves so the onus falls back in the student's lap to be able to show evidence of having met those expectations. Um, Howard teachers and engaged the community in forums so that the parents and the community understood what was happening um, as we started to move towards these graduate expectations. And then teachers did lots of work together to backwards plan uh, tasks that might help students meet each one of those graduate expectations and created rubrics. All right, so here's the challenge. We had to come up with a digital platform that was sufficiently functional enough that students could capture a wide variety of information, a wide variety of assessments, and then pull it all together into one package that was easily shareable with parents, community, teachers, and, and basically anybody. And so we chose uh, Evernote after much uh, research, discussion, uh, evaluation as our platform tool. Here's what we would like you to do. We're going to give you a little Evernote tour over the next few minutes, and, but it's interactive as well. And we'd like you to uh, do some of your own learning, capture some of your, your own information, um, artifacts, and create your own portfolio notebook. So you'll have a little bit of uh, understanding of how Evernote works before you leave this presentation. 
So, if you have a neighbor near, near you, uh, please turn and talk for a couple of minutes about what you might want to get out of this uh, presentation. Then open the iPad camera, capture an image and use it as an artifact, and screenshot a picture of something that represents what you were just talking about with your neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, you can just think about it privately. So let's take a little Evernote tour. So when we put content into Evernote, we put it in in the form of notes. So I want to show you the parts of a note. So if I open one of mine here, um, we're looking at a couple of characteristics. The note is always going to have a title. I titled this one with the kind of coffee that I'm uh, sort of keeping track of here. I roast my own coffee. So there's the title of the note. I put some of the, um, I put my note into different folders, di my notes into different notebooks and then I tag it. So I've tagged this one with coffee, curation, actually Moschina as well, and I can add other tags if I want, but I'm pretty much set here. Um, and then you put information into your notes, so I can add a notification if I want. I can star it. I can share it with other people using the upload button, email, airdrop, and this is the add attachment. So this is the way you get information in through the camera, uh, saved photos, or an audio note. Um, that's how you use a note. So when um, you're using the version of Evernote that we're using now and you want to create a note uh, from within Evernote, so you start it there, you got a couple of options here. You can open up your notes um, organizer and create a note there or you can go down to the bottom and type a quick note. So when you want to use the organizer it'll kind of look like this. So if we open up the screen you're going to see a lot of notes here and up in the top right hand corner is a plus symbol. So when I open that plus I have my note here and I have all my options for uh, creating a new note. I have my drop down with the camera and the audio and all those sorts of things. Um, let's go back though for a moment to the original bar and go down to the bottom and see quick notes. Now if I want to type I can go here and just start if I tap that bar then I, I'll get a chance to type a note. Uh, I can start from the camera. And it just turns the camera right on. There's my, you know, my coffee cup. And um, there are other options here. I can access the uh, camera roll to start a note. I can start with other things too. So um, this really just determines how you create the note, how you begin the note, because once you start it, um, there are lots of ways to um, add to your note. You can uh, start typing text, adding audio notes, whatever you want to do once you've created that original note. So John just explained some of the, uh, the capabilities of, of Evernote, and it's a, it's a very versatile, wonderful platform with which to base an ePortfolio off of. But the iPad as a cognitive tool is, is, has so many options and offer opportunities for students to capture their learning, explain their learning, uh, share their learning, and, and the nice thing is that that all fits in well with Evernote. So we're going to show a few examples of students using the iPad you know, to capture their learning. This is 8th grade science at Harvard Medical School. And just to give a brief background on this project, we started working with elements a couple weeks ago. And we've transitioned now into groups of elements on the periodic table. So I split the groups up and the, the classes into seven different groups. And they all had to research parts of the periodic table for properties, trends, patterns that might exist within these groups. They then created a video of that information and linked it into the Erasma app with a, a small trigger uh, that they used to initiate the video. And now we're doing a gallery walk throughout this, this is sort of the open area of the middle school. And Jody's doing a quick uh, scan right now. You can see some of the, uh, the auras or triggers that they used to uh, initiate the videos. If you hold the app open uh, over those, up pops the video that the students made. And in this way, they're teaching each other about different parts of the periodic table. 
rather than listen to me talk about it for days on end. I think this is our first stab at this, and I think it's kind of an interesting uh, approach. The first class, I asked for a little feedback at the end, and they all thought that they got something out of this. And uh, we're not quite done with it. We've got a little bit more of a, a culminating piece that goes with it. Uh, but I'm um, kind of fascinated with it. I like the, the, the work that they put in. This is using Explain Everything in a Math Classroom. We are going to learn how to find the area of a circle. To find the area of a circle, we first find the area of a square. The square that is the smallest square that, can, that this circle can fit into. The distance between the center of the circle, that dot, and the edge of the circle is called the radius. Let's choose a number like 3. So that radius is 3 inches long. And if we square the radius, we have 1 quarter of the larger square around the circle. That's 9 square inches. But you can see that that square fits less than 4 and So those were just two quick examples of students learning with iPad apps. And then the idea that they would reflect and connect that learning in an Evernote portfolio was where we wanted to move next. So we'll show you some examples of, of using the iPads in order to do that as well. So here's a student who is, has an Evernote note here. There's a project that was done in a, an English class where students wrote poems and then they voice recorded those poems, put them together up on a poster, and then had a gallery walk for the community to not only come in and see the text of the poem, but also to hear the students read that aloud. And the student took a picture of this, uploaded it into the Evernote note, and then in, in, as well added the voice recording right into that. Reflection can then be built in like you saw in the example when Aaron first showed us what the portfolio looked like in Evernote. Um, so students can come back and revisit time after time the work that they've been doing and reflect on that work and how that might connect to graduate expectations. Here's yet another example of an Evernote note where it's been scaffolded for a student and so the student was doing some reflection on some of the work and you can you notice that the scaffold can be set up so that it's a closed exercise so the text is written there for the student but then the student can use the voice recording right within the app um, respond to this and do that again using audio instead of text. When we first started working together for building the routines and reflections for goal setting and portfolio work, we did that uh, before having access to the iPads. So although there were some iPads in some classroom, I believe 20 in, a, in one of the English classrooms, uh, most of the reflection work and the infrastructure had to be done on paper. And you'll see here that if you can it's kind of small, but you can see that the hard graduate expectations were stacked up and students were asked to use stickies to go back and look at the work they'd done over the course of the semester and see what some of that work met some of those hard graduate expectations. So for instance, one of those is being interculturally competent. Students could look back on pieces they'd done in English class for writing or social studies and, and make those direct connections. And so routines like that had to be built in. So now we're going to uh, cover how to create an Evernote notebook and, uh, and actually throw some images in there and show you how some of the functionalities work as well. So the very first thing you're going to do is in the Evernote app, okay, you're going to find the notebooks button and tap on that and that's going to help us create a new notebook. You'll see in the top left of the screen an edit function for those notebooks and you'll tap on the edit and that'll bring you to a new notebook section where you can tap that and that will open up a new notebook for you. You'll want to name your new notebook. Uh, in this case we wanted to call it Portfolio. And Once you've created your new notebook, let's uh, create a note within that notebook. So in your notebook you'll see uh, if you have 
notes already posted in there or work already posted in there, you'll see some of those listed as I've got in mind. You can tap the uh, plus button in the right hand corner and that brings you to a new note. And from there you can title it and you can start to import content as John showed you earlier on in the presentation. And it is here in this new note that we're going to ask you to take that picture that you first um, captured when you did your, either your turn and talk or you reflected on what you wanted to get out of the session. And you can do that by clicking the little paper clip up in the right hand corner and you can see the, ca uh, the camera function or you have a saved photo and placing that photo, choosing it, the one that you'd like, placing it into your note. And then finally, after you've put your, your image in, um, instead of writing a text reflection, you can do an audio reflection using the microphone function uh, in Evernote. So now I want to uh, move us into the section where we're thinking about why Evernote, in addition to the functionality where there is text, audio, and images, um, and what that can bring to students' learning and reflection, we wanted to figure out a better way to organize in a past experiment with portfolios, we had used Google Sites with students, and the teachers had set up the template for Google Sites, but we were stuck with uh, needing to have each one of the Howard Graduate Expectations become a page in itself, and students needed to, after the fact, upload evidence from their Google Drive. It became clunky, and it was a little bit of a struggle, and again, it was after the fact rather than being embedded right into the um, daily reflection weekly reflection and so when we saw that we could potentially organize a portfolio with tags we got excited so what happens with a tagging function is instead of having to limit yourself to putting one piece of evidence in one specific folder you can organize the pieces of evidence in a note in an Evernote notebook by adding tags to that note and it automatically goes ahead ahead once you've added a tag and it generates a, a table of contents or an index like this if you will um, organized around the Howard Graduate Expectation tags and others that students would create. So we'll go ahead now and show you some examples of what that looks like in Evernote. So when you are starting to use an HCE portfolio, the basic ideas that you need to keep in mind are notes, um, notebooks, and tags. And really everything starts with a note. So whenever you've done an assignment or a project uh, that has, well, that you're going to eventually put in your HCE portfolio. Really, it's just about anything you've done. Uh, you want to think of that as a note. One assignment is one note. So I was going to use as an example, I'll use this um, note about coffee. So I, uh, the idea is when you put the evidence for whatever work you've done in here, maybe it's a photograph, maybe it's a video, hyperlink to a video, or uh, you can also use the paperclip to add uh, audio, and um, you can obviously type text in here, label the note, and you can tag it all sorts of ways. So this is about me roasting coffee. I tagged it with coffee and curation, and I want to tag it now because this is going into an HDE portfolio. So the second step is to really be sure that you've tagged it with good HDE labels. So the idea is you keep these labels as a bank. So you have a bank of HDE labels in here that you can go back to uh, every time you've captured work and you want to put it in here. So let's pretend this is uh, all about HCE number one, solving complex problems. So I put the tag in there and later on I'll be able to sort for that and um, keep track of what, you know, what work I've done that's related to HCE number one. Uh, so notes and then tags. If you want to look again, here are the, you know, I've got all sorts of tags. So I can tag for my classes, my, my subject areas like English and math. Um, and here are all my HGE tags, and they're actually quite, um, I wish I could show you just sort of, if you look across the top, you can see the uh, the full title, Demonstrate Respect and Compassion, so I like it to be kind of complete when I create them in the bank, because you don't have to retype it. And then what you can ultimately do is move notes into a notebook, um, so I thought we'd look at one just to kind of get an idea for a finished notebook is going to have all different kinds of work in it and they can be tagged for different HCEs. You can sort. This is the kind of portfolio that you can um, 
share in a conference or share with a mentor or somebody who's working with you uh, later. So that's kind of how you end up ultimately with an HG uh, notebook that collects notes that are labeled with tags, and that's our organization scheme. And now we'll move to Erin showing you how she can tag an example of an artifact and share that in a notebook. In Evernote, we have notes, notebooks, and tags. Tags are a way that we can organize our notes, not just by notebooks, but if we want to search quickly for something else, like an HGE. So if I go to tags, it opens up all these different things that I have to search by. And if I hit HGE number three, it pulls up four different notes from four different notebooks, all tagged HGE number three. Now let me show you how to tag something. I'll go into one of my notebooks and choose a note. Now if I click more, I can type in a tag. So H G it shows up a list of things. H G number three. And here we have a tag. I click done. And now if I go to that tag, just to think. I now have five notes, and I can quickly get this note just by searching. So now we'd like you to take a minute to think about your own situation, your own practice around assessment. What kind of skills or dispositions, concepts, understandings might you think about to measure in a portfolio at your school or in your classroom? We welcome you to pause this and go ahead and add those ideas about those standards that could become tags in your own system if you were to create an Evernote portfolio with your students. So where are we going from here? The main takeaway from the work that we did was that students become owners of their own learning and their own reflection on learning when they're using Evernote as a, a portfolio tool. It doesn't necessarily become an after the fact in the sense of having to, at the very end of a quarter or a semester or a school year, pull pieces of evidence into a celebration portfolio. In fact, it becomes a workspace and a storage portfolio with a tagging system. And what the teachers have discovered is that students might say in the middle of a learning opportunity in a classroom, uh, spontaneously, say, spontaneously say, this connects to HGE number three or HGE number six, um, which is of course what we want them to do to be able to think about connecting learning to bigger ideas. And they can go in and they can add multiple tags into their one piece of evidence. And We'd like you to take a minute, actually three minutes, to watch this video about um, what students say they want to see in terms of changes in schools, and that will lead us into our next steps and our thinking about our portfolio process. A lot lately that schools have high expectations of students. And who's not for high expectations? But what about the expectations that students have of our schools? These get much less attention, but they are essential to keeping us in school and deeply engaged in our learning. Just what are these student expectations? I see 10. Relationships. Am I just another face in the crowded classroom? A test score? Or do my teachers know about me and my interests and talents? Do they help me to form relationships with adults and peers who might serve as models, mentors, and coaches? Relevance. Is it just a series of hoops to jump? Or is the work relevant to my interests? Do my teachers help me to understand how my learning contributes to my community and to the world? Time. Am I expected to learn at a constant pace decided by the teacher? Or can I learn at my own pace? Is there time for my learning to be deep as well as broad? Timing. Do all students have to learn things in the same sequence? Or can I learn things in the order that fits my learning style or interest? Play. Is there always pressure to perform? Or do I have opportunities to explore and make mistakes and learn from them without being branded as a failure? 
Do I have opportunities to tinker and make guesses? Practice. Do we learn something and then immediately move on to the next skill? Or can we engage in deep and sustained practice of those skills we need to learn? Choice. Am I just following the same path as every student? Or do I have real choices about what, when, and how I will learn and demonstrate my abilities? Authenticity. Is my work just a series of dittos? Or is the learning and work I do regarded as significant outside of school by experts, family, and employers? Does the community recognize the value of my work? Challenge. Is it just about completing assignments? Or do I feel appropriately challenged? Am I addressing high and meaningful standards of excellence? Application. Is my learning all theoretical? Or do I have opportunities to apply what I'm learning in real-world settings? So there you have it. Ten expectations that should have equal billing with the school's expectations of students. I think of these expectations as imperatives, must-haves for every learner. I'd like to tweet these imperatives to every teacher in America and post them on every school's webpage. I'd like to propose that schools evaluate themselves not just by their students' test scores, but also by students' judgments about how well the schools deliver on these imperatives. What do you think? So we at Harwood Union, working together with a team of teachers and myself, decided to take on her challenge and to look at those 10 imperatives and think about our portfolio work. We went ahead and we created notes for each one of the 10 imperatives and looked again, the sort of reflecting in the way that we've been asking students to reflect on our practice and where we can go from here. I'm going to be sharing that notebook with you at the end of this presentation so you can have the link to that. But we're just showcasing one of these right now where we looked at that idea of time. We looked back and tried to pull out some evidence of how we've shifted gears in terms of this portfolio of work. Think about how we've changed our practice to make sure that students have time in class to reflect in a routine way. That students can make decisions about when they want to go back in and reflect. It doesn't have to just be reflection day on Thursdays, but again, it's meant to be built into our practice. And we've looked at different ways to be able to support a shift in time. One of the ways is exploring how we could use badges um, to have students work towards proficiencies. Um, it's an experimentation of a pilot in both an English and a math classroom that shows some promise as well. We want to look at the schedule and how that might change to help us make sure that those routine reflective practices build toward um, important learning and, and time and valuing that time for students to do that. The badges that I was speaking about, here's an example of what the learning management system that we were using badge tech here for the math teacher in the 8th grade math classroom. She was able to build backwards around some learning opportunities for students and again this how it connects to time and portfolio work is that students can self-pace through earning these badges uh, and then use whatever they the evidence that they've uploaded into this badge platform as evidence to show that they've met their Howard graduate expectation. Badge OS is the um, the system that we were using. It turns out that uh, as long as you have a WordPress. Uh, server, you can house WordPress on a server at your school, you can create a WordPress blog and then download or add um, plugins from BadgeOS to be able to create a system of quests and badges uh, to create your own self-paced learning. And we've also been talking to Six Red Marbles as a way to shift curriculum so that it becomes more um, self-paced and proficiency based so students can uh, not only think about their learning, their assessment differently, but they can think about their learning differently as well. Here's the link to the Evernote notebook, which is a public notebook, and that's the one that has our Evernote resources. If you're interested in some of the um, work that you've seen presented here, it also has our, our notes for our 10 imperatives based on that challenge with our, our pieces of evidence and our hopes for our next steps. I want to thank you for taking the time to spend with us going through our presentation. Um, a nod to Brian Wagner, who is my partner in doing this presentation today. 
for the recording of that, as well as Jody Curran and John Potts, who are Harwood Union Middle Level teachers who presented at the iPad Summit and were integral in putting together this presentation. Again, thanks for attending.